So this is it, huh? Yep. It's a 2006 Yamaha YZ250 two-stroke. I hate to sell it, but my wife doesn't want me riding it anymore, and uh, she's a boss, so what are you going to do? So you upgrade into a Harley or something, or are you downgrade into a bicycle? At this point, my wife might just downgrade me to a tricycle. I don't know. It kills me to sell the motorcycle because I like to ride it, but my wife won't let it happen anymore, so I got to let it go. The lowest I'll take is about 1500 Two-stroke, that means it's fast, huh? Very fast, definitely. A lot of horsepower. Here at the pawn shop, I see about two or three dirt bikes a month. So we live in a huge desert in Vegas, and everybody rides motorcycles. And this is one of the bikes to have if you're out in the desert. So you race these things? I raced a long time ago, don't race anymore. I have a seven-year-old son, and I ride with him. Now it's time for something a little slower. They jump 300 feet with these. I don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> It starts on the first kick, low hours on it. Got probably less than 20 hours on it, and it's an 06. When I buy a bike, I really want the number of hours to be less than 100 hours. Buying a bike with over 100 hours is like buying a car with over 100,000 miles. So you want to show me this thing starting on the first kick? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh -huh. Shouldn't be a problem. Unless I'm too weak. This is like the car that the little old lady only drove to church on Sunday. You know, it's as good as you want to get. So how much are you looking to get out of it, man? About 2000 Problem with 2000 man, is it just really doesn't leave me that much profit. If you want to do 1000 I'd be more than happy, but. Uh, I don't know, 1000 is pretty low. How about, can you meet me in the middle? I mean, this bike's in perfect condition. I'll tell you what, 15 ain't that bad, man. I, I can All probably right. do 15 if it helps you out. All right. All right, man, deal. That's all you can do, you can do. Sounds All right, cool. Good. My wife might be happy I sold this bike, but since she made me sell it, she's not getting a penny of this $1,500. It's all going to me. I'm back. You're back. Brought you another gun. Another one. Rob's a regular, and he's a major gun collector, so he always brings in something cool when he pops by. He drives a hard bargain, and we don't always make a deal. I have got a Smith Civil War carbine for you. My wife decided it's time for a new couch, so it's time to sell a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I come back here because they bought some of my guns, so hey, I'll keep coming back until they throw me out. I've had this for a number of years. I think they should be able to pay me about $2,500 and still make a little bit of money on it. I've had this for quite a while. You can tell it's in really close to excellent condition. These things were issued during the Civil War. Yes. You would just open the breech, pull it out, shove another cartridge in. You could fire pretty quickly. But there were some problems with this gun that made it less popular. The powder would get in between there, and then you couldn't close the breech quite. And so until you clean the gun, you couldn't fire it. And that's why it's in such excellent condition, because there were better guns in the field, and this stayed in the arsenal during the entire war. It's one of those designs that sounded really good on paper. <laughs> um, so the gun's really cool. I like it. It's nice. It's short. The only thing that concerns me is this pitting on the barrel. Do you know if the barrel's been reblued? I mean, it, it does have some pitting there, but the blue's st still there, so it's just a little weird to me. Uh, and this looks like it was sanded down. It, it's original. That possibly could have been cleaned a little bit. I don't know what to tell you there. Okay. Bluing is the finish on a gun that protects the metal from the environment. And if it's in bad shape, it can seriously lower the value. For an unissued gun, this thing has a lot of pitting, and that raises red flags for me. You've been in here enough times. You want to sell this, right? That's correct. And how much do you want for it? $2,500. Mm. Hey, I can see you're really in love with this gun. Not $2,500 worth. <laughs> Do you mind if I have my buddy come in just to make sure there's no rebluing on any of this stuff? Yeah, I know your guy. Just tell him not to be such a hard ass this time, and we won't have any problems. I can tell him that. I don't know if that'll happen or not, though. So, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to go give him a call. OK, thanks. I don't have a problem with him bringing somebody in for a second opinion. I know what I've got, and I'm perfectly comfortable with having somebody look at the gun. Hello there. I know you. That's right. I can't afford this. <laughs> Whatever it is, I can't afford it. <laughs> well, what we got is an old Smith carbine. It wasn't a real popular gun, right? It was moderately popular. Um, the big problem was when you break it down for reloading, you have to push up on this release lever, and you'd load it and you'd fire it. And the more you fired it, because it's black powder, the more fouled the gun would become. And sometimes, in the heat of battle, they'd push it back to the closed position, 
fire and the gun would blow up. Anything that blows up can be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> During the Civil War, if you could build a gun that would fire a bullet, you could sell it to the government because they needed every gun they could get. So it was a great time for innovation, but a lot of the new ideas really didn't make it past the war, and this was one of them. There's a little bit of pitting on it in a few places, and I just want to make sure it's not reblued because if it's reblued, it's worth a lot less money. Yeah, gun collectors don't like anything that's been reblued. They'd rather have something that's got a pit on it. Once it begins being restored, uh, half the population of collectors loses interest. Do your magic, Craig. OK. Let's look at the front of the barrel. That's where your concerns are. Yeah. I'm going to get my flashlight out because that always helps. Did you oil this recently? I mean, there's a lot of oil on it, which and do I plead the fifth on that? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that can hide a reblued finish on a gun. Um, it's a tough call, but I'm going to say uh, no. The gun has not been reblued. Touchdown. <laughs> so how much is the damn thing worth? Uh, a mint one would cost you about forty-five hundred. It's not mint. I would say in the condition that this gun is in, it's probably worth between $2,500 and $2,750. All right. Rick, see you, bud. Richard. The appraisal came in. I thought it was a little bit low, but I'm kind of used to this song and dance. You know, I hear it all the time. Buyers always want to pay less. Sellers always want more. OK, Rick, we ain't going to pay $2,500. OK. I like the idea of two grand. Two grand, huh? So this is where the dance kind of starts, huh? No, it's not a dance. Two grand's top of the mark. Remember, I got to retail it. You don't have to retail it. Right, right. OK? I got to make something off it. I know what I paid for it several years ago, and I paid more than that for it. $2,300. Well, I'll go $2,100. I mean, that, that's, that's the best I'm going to go. Uh, $2,250. $2,100. <laughs> $2,100 is a fair price for this gun. It really is. Looks like we got a deal. OK. All right. You know where to go. You bet. $2,100 was a little bit low, but it worked out, and it'll probably make my wife happy. I have a 1782 Revolutionary War military document signed twice by King George III. This is really, really neat. So is it pertaining to the revolution? Yes. You have a list of ranks for soldiers and how much they're expected to be paid. And on the other side is essentially a levy put on the British troops coming home from the Revolutionary War. And many of them were sick or injured. In the Royal Hospital of Chelsea, they needed the funds, so they put a tax on the British troops in order to help take care of these soldiers. Sounds like them damn British, doesn't it? You guys are required to go into battle, but if you get injured, we're going to charge you. <laughs> <laughs> I got the document from a 30-year private collection. It's, uh, an interesting document to be signed by the King of England. I'd like to sell the document today to take my wife, Maria, to England. That is really, really interesting. There's almost full-scale mutiny in the, in the English Navy because of uh, crazy things like this. Basically, these people didn't get a raise for over 100 years. I mean, if you were in the English Navy, if you had a captain that seized a lot of ships, then you would got prize money. If you were in the English Army, you were basically screwed. It was a terrible existence. There's so much stuff that they had to pay for or it was just taken out of your paycheck. That's not if the officers decided to take a little for themselves, which they did a lot of time. Yeah, um, <laughs> there was a lot of things like that that went on back then. During the Revolutionary War, British soldiers had all sorts of things taken out of their paycheck. Food, lodging, even haircuts. At the end of the day, they made four pennies a day. Most of them didn't even earn enough to support their families. And the weird thing was is people absolutely loved King George. You know, he reigned for right at 60 years, something like that, and he defeated Napoleon. Napoleon was going to invade England, and if the French actually invaded England. It would have been just complete anarchy. Exactly. So have you ever had this checked out by anybody? Uh, I have not. I'm an antique dealer by trade. This has been in my collection for a couple of years now. OK, so you want to sell it? Yes. And how much were you looking to get out of it? Uh, 4,500. 4,500. Yes. Um. If you don't mind, I'd like my friend to take a look at it. Let me see what he thinks of the content and the signature, and maybe we can make a deal. Sounds okay. good. Be right back. All right, cool. 
I have no doubt in my mind that it is a real document, but uh, he doesn't know me, so I don't blame him for wanting to get a second opinion. So this is it, signed on both sides by George Rex. The last king of America. Yes. yes. He also was the uh, monarch who won the uh, French and Indian War and essentially kicked the French out, but the uh, costs for doing that were the taxes that led up to the American Revolution. King George III, it's pretty significant that he was on the throne for 60 years. Everything happened from the French and Indian War all the way up through uh, the defeat of Napoleon. This document's from 1782, which means it's only about nine months after the British lost at Yorktown, and that's how the United States won its independence. All right, Rick, uh, what are your concerns about this document? Well, first off, he refers to it as a Revolutionary War document. Okay. It really never mentions anything about the colonies. And, I mean, it's been years since I had his signature. It was on a passport. I did not get a lot of money. Right. So what do you think? Well, looking at the ink, they used what was generally called iron gall ink. It goes on black, and over time, sort of rust, so it comes out sort of this brownish, tan, beige color. If the ink were jet black, that would sort of be a tip-off that it may not be completely legitimate. Mm -hmm. So I brought along some examples of some authentic King George signatures. George went a little mad in his later years and also went blind. So his son, who became George IV, used to sign for him and occasionally would sign documents, but usually sign them George PR for Prince Regent. So that's sort of an easy way to tell. And with him, you look for the big curl at the top and the fancy loop above the R and the loop at the bottom of the R, and it certainly matches. Okay, so you think it's all his signature and everything? Yes. So the big question, what do you think it's worth? Um, one of his major duties was signing documents. He was on the throne for 60 years. Even if he signed 100 documents and letters a week, which is probably conservative, times 60 years, you're getting tens of thousands of documents out there. It's not a letter to somebody important. It's not a, a diplomatic letter. It's not a fully handwritten letter by him. If I were offering this to an English client, I might offer to him somewhere in the 1250 range or so. Okay. So. <sighs> Thanks, man. You're welcome. Good luck with it. Yep, thank you. The problem is, from a collecting standpoint, it's not really about America. If somehow it is said something about the late rebellion in the American colonies, the value of it would have gone up. Well, I'm a little surprised at that, um, you know. That's all Stuart does is buy and sell these things. He's like my go-to guy. I mean, no, I understand. To sell this as a Revolutionary War thing will be tough. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say Yorktown, it doesn't say anything like that. And if it did, it would make a world of difference. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, and I'd pay you like $750, because Stuart told me I'd get like $1250 from an English guy. Right. Now, uh... Yeah, I just can't come down that that much. Okay, so it just ain't gonna happen? Unfortunately, not this time, no. Okay, thanks right. a lot. Man. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, when he gave me the initial appraisal, I, I did know that we just wouldn't be able to come together on a price today. As far as taking my wife, Maria, to England, I have many more documents where this one came from. Hey, Rick. Yeah? There's this motorcycle out back. You should take a look at it. Is it cool? Yeah, it's really cool. Okay. That's shiny. <laughs> it's an original 1969 T100C competition model. This is clean. It's like brand new. This is a Triumph Tiger, right? Trophy, actually. 500cc engine. Model number is T100. Where in the world did you get this? I bought it at auction. I get a lot of my bikes at auction. Uh, we recondition a lot of them. This one didn't need anything done to it. The pedigree on it is uh, new old stock components and parts. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. I wouldn't I... be selling it except my wife's making me sell it. <laughs> this bike is special because it's a 1969, probably at the peak of Triumph's accomplishments. I'm selling this motorcycle for $25,000. Least amount of money that I'd be willing to take would be $15,000. I've rode dirt bikes my whole life, and this was like the first real dirt bike. They were a lot lighter. They had a really big brake up front. More ground clearance than the 650s. To me, it's one of the coolest looking bikes ever made. They didn't make a whole lot of these, did they? Very few, and every one that they made, they sold. This is a survivor. One of the few. 69, 70 was a Triumph's premier year. So everything's completely stock. This is authentic. 
everything original. It's a collector's bike. Uh, 1969 is the year that uh, if you want a collection bike, it's the one to have. It was very rare, very collectible. Yeah, and uh... very expensive. This Triumph is one of the very first dirt bikes, and most of them were beaten to death. This bike looks like it's been restored right. I've always loved old Triumph motorcycles, so I'm gonna have to contain myself. <laughs> Tell me, uh, how much do you want for this thing? I've seen these go for as much as $25,000. They're just kind of where I'd like to settle. You know, I, I love old Triumphs. I'm one of those guys who collects them but doesn't know nearly enough. Do you mind if I have someone take a look at it? I just want to make sure everything's cool with it and everything's correct. It's correct. It's not that I don't trust you, it's just I don't trust anybody, but I do trust my buddy. So hang out 10 minutes, I'll get him down here. This thing's exciting, it really is. Okay. I'm not nervous about uh, an expert's opinion or anybody else's opinion. The bike is perfect. It speaks for itself. Mercy be, that is something special. Brings back memories, buddy. That's the <laughs> yeah. way it was. The history behind these kind of things, Rick, is just unbelievable. I mean, Elvis Presley at one time bought every person, his crew, one of these bikes. That near fatal crash that Evil Knievel had jumping down there at Caesar's Palace, is on a Triumph. Wow. Everything Triumph is today is, came from these bikes right here. Very, very special. That is definitely cool. I'm Mark Yule of Freedom Eurocycle, and I'm an expert in Triumph motorcycles. Triumph Motorcycles is held in high esteem because of the fascination that people have with Steve McQueen, Elvis Presley, James Dean, Marlon Brando in the movie The Wild One. There's just a lot of history in these Triumph Motorcycles. So is it all original? This is a very rare bike. It, this is a C model T100. Those were the ones that were the most sought after, especially now by collectors. You know, as I look over this bike, simple little things like the foot pegs, they are right. I look at all the switches, the housing, the headlight. These tanks still today are hand pinstriped. It's a pleasure to look at something like that, knowing they're still maintaining that today. The upswept pipes on it, very, very rare piece. Very few of them left. Pretty special bike, Rick. OK. So what do you think it's worth? Somebody that was an avid collector of these motorcycles right here, I mean, they might pay $30,000. But realistically, it's in that $20,000, $25,000 range. Something like that is really what this bike might be worth. All right, this is really cool, but would you like to take it out and ride it? That might yeah. sell you on it. <laughs> I don't need to ride this bike to make this deal, but I'm going to because I can. <laughs> I'll give you a call if I buy it. Thank you, Rick. Nice meeting you, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Finding a 1969 Triumph Trophy 500, it's so rare. This is a motorcycle I think that would fit in the store here but I would like to see Rick keep it for himself. Here we go. Nice. Awesome. This bike rides like a 1969 motorcycle. Actually, a little better than most 69 motorcycles. It handles all right. It doesn't have a lot of power. The suspension sucks. But damn, I look good on it. <laughs> I'm in love with this bike. I really, really hope I can make a deal on this thing. What do you think? Pretty snappy? For a 69 bike, yeah. It's like a brand new bike. It is. So, Amy, anyway, what's your bottom line? I'm still talking 25. I'll give you 14 grand. Now, I'm not gonna lose it for 14 grand. I mean, it, what is your best price? I'll come off my 25, 20 grand. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 15. I mean, it's a fair price. I mean, if you put this in an auction, you know, by the time you pay the auction fees and everything, you know what a nightmare the auctions can be. 17.5. It's a really cool bike, I don't get me wrong, but I think as far as business goes, it will be hard for me to even sell this. 15 grand's it. You drive a hard bargain, Rick. If it wasn't for my wife making me sell it, 
um, I'd stick to my guns. 15, I'll do it. Sweet. Um, let's go do some paperwork, man. OK. Um, this is great. I'll make my wife happy. I'm going to settle for $15,000 for the bike, and then I'm going to buy another motorcycle. I just hope my wife doesn't find out about it. Earlier today, I got a call from a guy about an old golf cart. The old ones can be super collectible. So me and Sean are on our way to go check it out. So this is why I called you guys. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, she's beautiful. <laughs> The reason why I called the guys from the pawn shop today is to come down and look at my 1960s golf cart. When I picked it up, I was highly intoxicated riding dirt bikes in the desert. I'm hoping to get about $300 for it, but I'll take 50 bucks just so my wife doesn't yell at me. Where in the world did you get this? I got it out in the desert. Me and my friend were dirt biking, threw it in the back of my truck, thought I could restore it, but it's just too much work for me. No, I think <laughs> it was in the desert for a reason. <laughs> I did some research on it. I think it's like from the 1960s, so. It was made by a marketer. It was like one of the first electric golf carts. For some reason, my dad likes these things. I don't know why. He likes old cars. He won't drive it if it's not a classic. It's a classic. This um, is a classic. Yeah, but I didn't realize it was in such bad shape. The old man would love one of these old marketeer golf carts. They were one of the first companies to go with an electric golf cart back in the 1950s, and they're super collectible today. But this thing needs a little work. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Look at this. Look at that battery. <laughs> so the motor should be back here, right? Yes. This is going to be fun. I can already tell. <laughs> <laughs> it turns. The motor turns? Yeah, it turns. We just need a new belt. That's it. Yeah, it looks like you need a lot more than a belt, guy. It's not that bad. A couple of tires. Maybe some new upholstery. It's like putting a little lipstick on a pig. It's more than lipstick on a pig. This is plastic surgery on a pig. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is beat up, but I know the old man has always wanted one. So if I can get it for the right price, I'll take it to Rick Dale and get it polished up into the ultimate present. All right, so what do you want to do with it? I want to sell it. All right, and how much do you want for it? I did some research on it. They go for a lot of money when they're all restored and cherried out, so 300 bucks. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 100 bucks for it, and I will get it off your property. 200 bucks. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 150 bucks for it, and I shouldn't be doing that. All right, 150 bucks. 150 bucks. Awesome. All Thank right. you. I'm totally happy that I got 150 for it. I thought I'd be lucky to get 25, so I'm very excited. That'll make my wife happy. All right, so what do you got here? Well, this here's a 1960 Cushman Eagle. OK. This one's a 1957 Cushman Eagle, but it's got a highly modified engine, aftermarket carburetor and cam. These things are pretty sweet. If you took this around the block, you would really be scared. You're on your way about 45 to 50 mile an hour. <laughs> this is so fast. Yeah, these are a little too much for me to be driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I found them in a barn, a lot of rust, no paint, and restored them. I don't have room to store all my toys, so I need to sell them. Uh, the least I'll take is seven, uh, but I, I'll listen to what they have to say. This is awesome. Cushman has been around for a long time. It started in the early 1900s by the Cushman yep. Cousins. Yeah. They were making farm motors, and I know they make a lot of the cars that would be just for industrial use around the farm and warehouses. Yeah, these were like the scooters of their day. I'm imagining when you got these, they were probably rusted out and in pretty bad shape. Yeah, yeah, they were. It was completely disassembled. Everything has been sandblasted. The frame has been repowder coated. I built it mainly for a driver. Somebody to have fun on. Okay. Cushman scooters became popular back in the 1940s. They were especially popular with high school and college students. It was a less expensive way to get around than buying a car, and you could get somewhere faster than riding a bike. Tell me what you want to do with them. Well, I'm going to sell them. How much are you looking to get? I'd like to have $3,650 out of this one and $4,500 out of this one. Um, the paint job is not too good, I'm going to tell yeah, you that. It's I know. got that going against it. If I was to sell them, I would have to take some of that price off because someone's going to want to buy these and probably repaint them, you know? Right. I could do five grand for the pair. What do you think about that? I believe 
at 6,500, you could make a little bit of money. My wife would be happy. Believe it or not, I'm not concerned with making your wife happy. <laughs> I got a boss to make happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want to get rid of him, I can take him for 5,000, but that's really yeah. going to be top of the dollar for me. No, can't do it. Can't do it. All right, well, yeah. thanks for bringing him by. You bet. All right, I'll get the door for you. OK, thank you. I thought his offer of 5000 was a joke. Uh, I've got more in parts than that. I'll take him back home, and I'll ride the blue one and try to sell the red one. Hey, what can I help you with? I got a great antique uh, vehicle to show you. Would you like to look at it? Um, sure. Can you bring it around to my back lot back here? Sure, I can do it right now. OK, I'll meet you back there in a few minutes. All right, thanks. Pops, you want to go look at an old car? Yeah, why not? If there's one thing that can get the old man up from a nap, it's a chance to check out a classic car. What can you tell me about this thing? It's an early series 1955 GMC pickup truck. OK. You know what I think when I see a truck like this? Thank right. God they don't make them like this anymore. Uh. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to try to sell my 1955 GMC pickup truck. I bought it about 15 years ago, and I used it for advertising in front of my store. My wife says it's got to go. So it's got to go. I'm asking $10,000. Uh, however, I'd be willing to settle for as low as $7,500. Do you know anything about it? This is the early series 55. I made them for about three months. In the middle of the year, they came out with the square one. So it's the last of the round ones they ever made. That's cool. Trucks back then, extremely utilitarian. They were just basic trucks, son. There were some options, like this cab right here. That was sort of a big deal because uh, it got rid of a lot of blind spots. This is the one guys like. This is the, the five window is, uh, is the cool one. The first pickup truck, I believe, was created in Germany before 1900. It seemed to catch on a little bit because today, there's over 50 million pickup trucks on the road, and that's just in the United States. I like them, son. Trucks like this and the cars from the 50s was works of art. It's got all the round lines, but this one here looks like it's, it's going to need an awful lot of work. It needs paint. It does need some body work on it. The wood's got to be replaced in the bed. Yeah. But all these parts are highly available through the catalogs now. Okay. Well, yeah, you, get, oh, you yeah. could get the bed of the truck at, at the lumber store. You can do that, too. <laughs> Old cars are tricky because it's never just the purchase price you have to figure out. You also have to think about how much it's going to cost you to get it restored. And from the looks of this thing, it's not going to be cheap to get it in the shape that my customers are looking for. How much do you want for it? I want 10000 If you look on the internet, they can go up to fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, dollars 100000 depending on how they're done. From what I can see, I don't see ten grand, but maybe there's something here I'm not seeing. So let me call a buddy of mine, get him down here, have him take a look at it. And if there's something here, maybe we'll make a deal. All right, let's do it. OK. All right. All right. Let's give it a shot, Rick. I'm hoping it'll be good news, because the body's in really good condition. And I think that uh, with a little love, it'll be worth a lot of money. What's up, brother? Hey, what's How you up, doing, man? man? The guys usually give me a jingle and have me come down when they have a vehicle that they want me to inspect for them. What have we got here? This is. Uh, Early series, 1955 GMC, All right. half ton pickup truck. Uh, the last of the round ones that they ever made. OK. Tell me, Rick, what's uh, what's your concerns, brother? What are you thinking about? I just want to know what it's worth. I know it's a rare body style, but I don't know if it's that desirable. I got you. Uh, you mind if I give it a once over? Sure. Check please, it all out? All right. Ahead. All right. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. The one thing that's undeniable about the truck is it's it's the right body. The curved windows in it, it's definitely a rare version, being the early 55. You know, I'm sure when they built and designed this truck back in the 50s, they weren't thinking about collectors. As years went by and things got ugly and dull, it became uh, quite evident that those beautiful old trucks are beautiful. And so uh, collectors love them. So what do you think? If it's OK with you, I'd like to take it around the block. Is that cool? Sure. You want to come with me? Do I? Yeah, you know you want to. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go. Let's do this, man. <laughs> Giving a truck like this a once-over can be helpful. But for an experienced car guy like Danny, nothing tells you more than actually driving it. So I can't wait to take it for a spin and see what he thinks. Your door's open. <laughs> Dude, don't fall <laughs> Is 
it yeah. just me or am I getting, you know, yeah, there's, there's, fumes there's, in here? There's definitely an exhaust leak. <laughs> Man, this thing is a bit scary to drive. Oh, she stopped again. Uh, I'll just wait till the light turns green before I start. <laughs> that way we can breathe. Brakes are tough. It's filling up with fumes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were gonna roll. <laughs> it steers like garbage. I'm just afraid of going out this door. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> At least you got a steering wheel to grab on. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm gonna rip it off. <laughs> the motor's shaking like crazy. It's a little spooky. Pretty good, huh? Almost like brand new. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was new car smell I was smelling in there. <laughs> so I'm going to cut right to the chase. Although it is the desirable year, people do love that. In my opinion, it needs mechanical, it needs cosmetic, it needs electrical, it needs trim, it needs rubber, it needs chrome, it needs literally everything. So what do you think it's worth? To you, nothing. You know, a vehicle like this, fully restored, can be worth up to 30000 But this particular truck, you'd have to put twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 in it to just make it nice. There's no money to be made on this. That's my guy. I mean, I got to go with what he says. You don't want to buy it? That's up to you. I'm not going to twist your arm. No problem. OK. Have a good Absolute one. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Dad. I'm going to put that truck on the trailer and drive it to San Diego, and I have a standing offer from somebody over there for the truck. I just thought I could get more for it here. <laughs> <laughs>